Today we're gonna do a really fun one. I'm gonna show you how to make my mini wine red chocolate cake. So let's get on with the ingredients. Five tablespoons of cake flour, four tablespoons of sour cream, two tablespoons of cocoa powder, and I am using Dutch processed cocoa powder in my recipe today, two tablespoons of vegetable oil, three tablespoons of granulated white sugar, one teaspoon of baking powder, an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, one egg, and our last ingredient, two teaspoons of red food coloring. And I am using a gel food coloring in my recipe today, but you can also use liquid food coloring. The other thing I wanted to mention, I'm using cake flour, but you can use all-purpose or plain flour instead if you wish. So those are the ingredients, so let's get started. For our first step, I'm gonna get my egg into my bowl. To that, I'm gonna add in my vegetable oil and all of my granulated sugar. I'm gonna grab my hand mixer and I just wanna start mixing all of this together. So mix this really well till it starts to get a little bit fluffy. You can increase your mixer if you wish. Get some air into your mixture. You can see the color has changed. That's telling you that you're doing a good job. A lot of air has been mixed in there. That's good. And then, I'm gonna get in our sour cream. And if you don't have sour cream, you can use yogurt or you can use buttermilk. That's good. And then I'm gonna get in all of my red food coloring. And like I mentioned, you can use a liquid food coloring as well. I'm using a paste today, a gel. I'm gonna get all of that in there. Okay, that's good. I'll grab my mixer again, speed number one. Just get all of that incorporated. Now I'm going to increase my mixer again. That looks good. I'll add in my salt. And now we're gonna sift in our final ingredients. So we have our flour, cocoa powder, a little bit of that flour was still in there, just get all of that in, and our baking powder. And we'll just give that a little tap. Grab the back of a spoon, and just push this through. Now if you're just using things that are white, you can just use your fingers to do that. But if you're using cocoa powder, you wanna use a spoon because it will color your fingers. That's perfect. Grab our mixer and just slowly start incorporating this. Just speed number one. And I am using speed number one. I don't want to overwork my batter. Once you think it's mixed, that looks good. We'll just clean off our beaters. And we are ready to fill our pan. What I'm using today is a little heart baking pan made by Wilton. They say it's four inches by one and three quarter inches high and I have lined it with parchment paper. In some countries, this paper is called baking paper. I'm gonna place my little baking tin on a little pizza tray in case there's any spill that happens in the oven. And we'll just get all of this in there. Look 
looks good. Just going to give it a little tap. And now I'm going to bake this in my 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 35 minutes. And here we go, exactly 35 minutes in my 350 degree Fahrenheit oven. And that looks amazing. I got a really nice rise on this cake, which means I can actually have my cake and then I've got a little piece for myself as well that we're going to cut off later on in our video. But look at that, really, really nice. This is extremely hot right now. I'm going to let it cool down, I'm going to unmold it, and then I'll come back. About 20 minutes after I took my cake out of the oven, I just opened up the little casing here just to allow air in around the cake, just so that we don't have any moisture or condensation buildup. Then I'm just going to simply get this open and pop our cake out. Really nice. So at this point my cake has completely cooled and I just want to just take off the bottom and then I'm going to level off the top of the cake. I do want to have a nice flat surface for my cake. Look at how nice that is inside really nice. Now you can see that this is a very dark red and I will zoom in a little bit so you can see this a lot better. If you want this to be really really vibrant red you're going to diminish the amount of cocoa that you used in the recipe. So you could drop it by one half and you're going to get much more red looking but you can see that this is a very very rich dark red and I will zoom in just to show that. So I've zoomed in and I've also brought my studio lights quite close. I just wanted to show you this much closer up so that you can see that really rich red. A really, really nice cake. And you can see, nice and moist. So I have a little cooling rack here. I have taken my cake and I've just flipped it over. So this is the bottom that you're seeing right now. And this is the area that I'm going to frost. I've got a little pizza tray here and a little piece of parchment paper to catch my chocolate ganache. And in today's recipe, I am going to be using a chocolate coffee ganache, which is really, really nice. If you want to see a video on how I made that, I'll put a link to it in the description box below this video. I'm just going to move this over a little bit. So this chocolate ganache is made with coffee. There is one cup of dark chocolate one cup of whipping cream which is 35 percent cream and there's also one heaping teaspoon of instant coffee in this ganache i'm just going to give this a little stir and you can see how nice this is and i'm just gonna get this on just get all over and I don't care how much is dripping over the sides because I can reuse it. I'm just going to let it drip. I want to make sure that I get it all covered. So this is a mini cake, probably good for two people maximum. Three people if you're on a diet. I think that looks good. And then You can take a spatula and run it over the top, or you can just tap it, and that'll usually get it all nice and flat, which I'm going to do now. And I think that looks pretty good. I'll just give it a little spin, and I like that. So at this point, I'm going to pop this into my fridge for about 20 minutes just for it to set up, and then I'll come back. So here we are a little while later. I let my cake chill in the fridge for about a half an hour and then I just simply moved it over to my serving plate. I'll bring that in. The chocolate that dripped down and went under the cake onto the parchment paper, you can simply take that, put it back into your bowl and reuse it at a later time. I have a cute mold here. 
Be Mine, True Love, Hug Me. This is just a little mold, cost me about $3. And I just made some white chocolate hearts before. I'm just choosing which one, maybe, I don't know, Be Mine would be nice. And I want to finish my cake off with that. I just want to get that right in the middle there. I think that looks good. You could go with regular chocolate, but then you're not going to have that contrast. So I think that's fine for that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on here so that you can see this cake a lot closer up. So I've zoomed in and overall I'm happy with my cake. The only thing I think I may redo the heart, just re-pour it with more white chocolate and make it much thinner. I find it just sticks out a little bit too much. Other than that, I think it looks pretty good. So I think I'm gonna re-pour that. I'll change it out and then I'm gonna come back and uh, we're gonna cut into it. I think that looks really cute. So here we are again, and just before we cut into our cake, I just wanted to show you that I remolded the little piece of white chocolate and I just made it a little bit thinner and I think that looks nicer on our cake. So I'm gonna zoom out and we're gonna cut our cake. So let's cut into our really nice cake. so you can see it. There we have it. Looks really nice. Let me zoom in. The color of this I would describe as a very rich dark red. If you want this lighter you're going to drop the amount of cocoa in my recipe. That will bring it out a little bit more red but then you get into an area where the cake is going to start looking a lot more fake I like this color, it's a very, very rich red, but you can change it up any which way you like. I'm gonna grab my fork, and of course, I'm gonna have to try a little piece. Ooh, look at that. Mmm. Mmm. That's really good. The coffee in the chocolate ganache really brings out that chocolate flavor. A really simple recipe, a fun one to do. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you wish. If you're on Facebook, you can head over to facebook.com slash bake like a pro. I'm also over there. I will have the written ingredients for this recipe on my Facebook page and also on my website. All of the links for Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram will be down underneath this video in the description box. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed your time and I'll see you next time. I'm going to have to go in for a second piece. Mmm.